In the last video, I gave an overview of the Salesforce platform's underlying architecture. In this video, we're going to do a deeper dive into the platform's data layer. Let's go ahead and get started. When you create or customize an application, the platform stores related metadata in shared database tables that maintain metadata for all tenants. Things like org-specific objects, stored procedures, and database triggers are all virtual constructs described by metadata that the platform stores in a few database tables known as a universal data dictionary. There's a table that stores metadata about the objects that you define for an application, and there's another table that stores metadata about the fields that you associate with each object. To help with performance, the platform uses metadata caches to retain the most recently used metadata in memory to improve response times and reduce the amount of disk I.O. When you use an application to read or write data, the platform stores your data in a shared table that maintains data for all of its tenants. A system table stores the application accessible data that maps to all of the org specific tables in their fields. Let's zoom in on this table and take a closer look at it. Each row includes identifying fields, like a globally unique identifier or a GUID, the ID of the org that owns the row, and the encompassing object identifier. And the value columns, which are also known as flex columns, store application data that maps to the objects and fields defined in the metadata tables. Now let's zoom back out and take another look at the overall schema. The platform also supports the declaration of fields such as character large objects, or CLOBs, that allow for the storage of long text fields of up to 32,000 characters. And since the system allows for object and field definitions as metadata instead of individual database structures, the platform can allow for schema maintenance activities in one org without affecting other orgs. Lastly, the platform also maintains internal metadata in a number of tables that the kernel uses to optimize request latency at runtime. This includes things like indexes and relationships between objects. Now, just like in the platform overview video, I want to make sure to point out that the concepts I described in this video are not things that you can change as an architect, but having a good understanding of them will help you make better decisions about the things that you can change, and it'll also bring more clarity to the topics we cover in the well-architected framework. And also, just like the last video, this one only scratches the surface of this topic. If you want to learn more about it in depth, make sure to check out the platform multi-tenant architecture document that you can find on the Salesforce Architects website and also make sure to check out the Well-Architected Framework. I put links to both of them below. If you found this content to be helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, and I am looking forward to seeing you next time.